Welcome, friends, to another episode of Dan Tromblay Music. Today we are going to talk about composing a music track specifically for a music library using Native Instruments Noir Piano Library, which is amazing, and Guitar Rig 6. Let's get right to it. I find all the piano samples from Native Instruments are really fantastic. I just find I go to them continuously. I have a ton of different piano samples, um, probably eight or nine or maybe even ten. Uh, I've been using a lot of una corda, and uh, Noir just looked really interesting to me. So the upgrade with Native Instruments, half price, so I figured, hey, I'd give it a shot. So let me play a little bit of it just in this kind of a natural sort of state. Okay, already just a beautiful, beautiful, soft, delicate sound. Um, and that was without really starting to tweak, tweaked a little, a little bit of uh, some of these settings, which I'll talk about. But the big thing is, of course, you have all of your, you know, the tweak ability is just endless. Um, control the release of the samples, pedal noises, which I do like for my personal projects where I'm releasing something because it kind of just really sucks you into the environment. This particular song is more uh, geared towards uh, getting placed in a music library. So I find that some of those things can sometimes detract some of those mechanical sounds. I love them and I love the fact that you can tweak them continuously. But anyway, tone control, velocity, you know, color, tonal shift, dynamics, reverb, delay. I mean, just endless, endless tweakings effects you know anyone who's used uh, some of their other native instruments uh, other piano libraries will some of this will look familiar to you uh okay but this is really what's all about the particles engine this is why i was so interested in this library so if i play this part we just okay all right straight up sound now i'm going to turn on the particles engine Gonna play like just the same same notes. sounds amazing there's so much going on there um so what i did was i layered um two piano parts one using just the straight up piano sound and then the second one with the particles engine so i'll talk about how i did that i fooled around with all these settings and back and forth and tonal controls and soft stick noises and and timber and uh you can tempo lock it got your different modes different presets like it's just i'll just play a couple of them so you can kind of hear what it sounds like i mean you know i love being able to play one or two notes or a chord and be able to do so much with it. So that's why I love these libraries so much. Um, anyway, it's just it's just endless. I'll play a couple more and check it out. Pluck to action, let's check that one out. Very cool. Okay, should we do one more? Let's do one more. Uh, there was one here that I really liked. Uh, it was kind of, oh yeah, the playing brushes one I think was pretty cool. And 
then you can mix between how much of the original sound you want or how much of the particle engine you want. So let's bring up the particle a little bit more. Just in, and I mean, you could just get lost in this engine. I mean, it just sounds bloody amazing for sound design. I don't know. I, th I think it's it's incredible, and that's why I wanted this library for a long time. So that was just a demo track that I opened up. So let me go back into the piano part. So we'll just solo out one track at a time. So I start off with just straight up, very very soft piano sound. So as you see, just a lovely, lovely tone on this piano. I uh, used the color knob and I went all the way over to the left to just get the softest sound I possibly could. I also adjusted the dynamics again so that the high range of the dynamics didn't get too high, so it wasn't too harsh. Because again, this is library music. It's, it's designed to be placed under something, maybe under dialogue, typically under dialogue. So if there's too much going on, um, it's uh, if the, the sounds are too harsh, um, they're probably gonna skip and move, move on to the next one. So you have to be really careful with those kinds of things. Now, one issue I did have because I put this color knob all the way down, I started to get some really um, built up resonance in kind of the mids, the low mids. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep it so I'm, if you have headphones, then that's the best way to listen to it. So I'll take the EQ off so you can hear it. up around this now, depending on what kind of headphones uh, you're listening to this you're gonna be able to hear that or if you have really good monitors you're gonna be able to hear that like thumpy built up low mids uh, which I don't like at all so what I did was I just uh, I just found that frequency and it was somewhere around, you know, I did like a sweep where, you know, you grab your uh, EQ puck, bring it up and sweep it around until you can find that resonance that sounds awful and then you cut it. Okay, I've talked about subtractive EQ on this channel. It's you, Subtractive EQ is your best friend as opposed to trying to add frequencies, take stuff away, you're gonna get a much cleaner mix. So I determined that it was around, you know, around this this frequency right here. So I just scooped out that low part, and I also scooped out a little bit more of the low low end roll off. I get a much uh, much cleaner sound, much less uh, built up resonance. And again, it might it might sound subtle to you. You might be like, Dan, I can't tell the difference. Trust me, it's there. And then what I did was I copied that same piano part, and I duplicated it right here. As opposed to trying to uh, replay a second part over top, um, because I wanted to introduce the particles engine, I wanted the part to match exactly. So I literally copied and pasted this track, but as you can see in the uh, MIDI data, we have far less. So what I did was I went through in the second part and I just took out all of the, basically all of the, mostly the right hand. I just kept the chords in the left hand. Okay, and the reason is, is that it started to get the particle engine, you know, you have to be careful with it because it can get real busy real fast. So instead I wanted just more of a kind of a subtle kind of uh, use of it. So let's listen to the uh, particle engine. So you can see it's very, very background. It's got a beautiful stereo image. It just kind of slowly kind of creeps in there. It adds a little bit of rhythmic texture without being too much. Uh, when I left all those other notes in there in the particles engine, um, it was just a little bit too much. And then uh, to that, I added, of course, I'm using Albion Tundra like pretty much all the time these days. Um, literally just a pad sound. Uh, this is the awesome distant choirs from, uh, from Tundra which I love, just very mixed low in the background, just add a little bit of, you'll hear. Just 
just to add a little bit of angelic kind of frequency to it. Now, if I was going to be, if you've been watching Christian Henson's channel, he talks about library music and the importance of, I won't repeat the phrase that he used because he swears a lot in his videos, but uh, doing tons of different um, variations of the song. So for something like this, so library music, typically between two minutes, two and three minutes. Um, and then I would probably have like a solo solo piano. I would have solo with the pad, maybe the pad separately, the guitar separately, a whole bunch of alternate versions. You need to approach it like you were um, editing this, you were doing the video editing. What would I need in order to tweak it all together and splice it all together to work for my project? So bear that in mind when you're putting these together. Approach it like you're editing the video that it's going to be placed in. Okay, so that's the Tundra, and then I wanted to uh, wanted to get some guitar rig in there. So this is a guitar rig uh, six, which I talked about in one of my other videos, but I was using a demo version because I didn't have the whole version. I think the demo version times out at, I think it's 30 minutes, and then you get like this, zzz, this jarring. And every time I'd use the demo version, I was like, oh, man, every time I got to the end of the 30 minutes, I'm like, ah. Oh. It's done already. I mean, you can just start it again, but it's getting a little bit much. So 50% off. I was able to upgrade my uh, contact library and get Noir and Guitar Rig and a bunch of other stuff, which I'm probably not going to use. But anyway, those are the two big things that I want to get. So this is literally all the guitar is doing. That's pretty much it. It's just an open uh, open F chord uh, finger plucked. I don't use a pick. Don't ask me why. I don't like them. Um, and uh, the sound, I've talked about it before in Guitar Rig, is called that XY. I just went through a few of the presets, but man, I love, love, love this particular patch in Guitar Rig 6. Um, I haven't done a full-on comparison between uh, Guitar Rig 5 and 6, but 6 just sounds cleaner uh the interface is a little bit nicer like if you love five you're gonna love six um so it was kind of a no-brainer to me so that was it for the guitar now what i did mess around with so this is a uh, this is a mexican strat uh which i think has been probably altered with the pickups i bought this i don't even know how many years ago used and uh the reason i use this particular guitar is because it's the one that I have. There you go. It's kind of like you're shooting a video. Which camera are you using? You're using the use the one you have. If you can't make something good with the one you have, don't buy anything else. It's not going to make any difference. This sucker holds the tune extremely well. It does not go out of tune, uh, which I love. And uh, what what I did have to mess around with is the pickup position a little bit because we got a single coil. I don't know how well you can see that single coil and then we have these hum humbuckers so if I just I'll, I'll take my fingers off the string a little bit you should hear an awful awful terrible buzz okay I guess because it's that single coil pickup if I switch the position down a little bit better but watch when I switch to the mid position humbucker baby so much better so anyway bear that in mind when you're all the guitar players that are watching this will, I'm sure, will be making fun of of me because remember, I'm a piano player who who likes to add guitar. If if you are able to add real instruments to your projects, do it as much as you can. And guitar, as I talked about in the past, really hard even with uh, guitar libraries to imitate the sound of the fingers on the strings. And you know what? It's just more fun. It's more fun to get some real guitar in there. So. Very, very background uh, guitar track. Nothing nothing much in there. And that's pretty much it. I duplicated that kind of picking part. Mixed one out hard left, one hard right. A uh, little bit of EQ through some of the tracks, mostly rolling out the lows. Uh, there's no external reverb added to this project whatsoever. And then I ran it through uh, Ozone. Um, I think it's like an old version of Ozone, like 5 or something. There's probably like ozone 20 by now 
whatever, man, this works for me. Uh, just to bring up the levels, clean up the mids a little bit, and that is pretty much it. So Noir and uh, Guitar Rig, extremely useful, versatile libraries that you can do so much with, and that's what I like. So let me play the track, and then we'll have some final thoughts. Turn this back on. I'll turn off my mic so that uh, you don't have to listen to this. Listen to me breathing while the track's playing. Here we go. Final thoughts. Don't go nuts buying a whole bunch of different sample libraries, but then when you do, choose wisely. Invest in the libraries that you can get a lot out of for spending as little amount of money. Native Instruments uh, piano samples I think are fantastic. The guitar rig is amazing, extremely usable. Uh, you can get results quickly straight out of the box and they blend very very nicely uh, with my other libraries for strings brass percussion most everything else as you know if you've been watching this channel you use spitfire audio so a combination of all those different things i think works really nicely thanks for watching my friends stay safe <laughs>